Emerging markets are where everyone wants to be these days because that's where the growth is. But how do you evaluate growth versus risk? Here to shed some light on the question is Syed Iftika Ali, Group Finance Director for the UAE-based Bin Zayed Group. Mr. Ali, welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you very much, Madam. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I think it's a very, very significant question. Emerging markets always have offered a variety of uh, growth prospects. Um, over the last 20 years, they have emerged, really. And the estimation of the world is that 65% uh, of the economic activity and wealth accretion would occur in the emerging markets. I think the basic for any business decision is the macroeconomics of the particular area, the political system, the legal system, the transparency of transactions. And once you have that, one has to consider what kind of products, goods and services could be added at competitive prices with a wonderful distribution system so that you occupy the niche market through sheer competitive uh, aspects. You build a market there and you stay there for the, for the long while. People should not try to take shortcuts in emerging markets because obviously where their wealth is, there would be too many operators who may like to take advantage that you're coming from a different area. I think the most important thing is the due diligence, which is essentially a function of uh, the demand and supply, the rules and regulations, and taxation, and how you conduct business in that environment. Investment is a very wonderful place to be in, but you should never fall in love with your investments. You should know when to get out of them so that you make money. And I think that is the most important lesson that we have for emerging markets. Given the fast-changing, often volatile environment that characterizes emerging nations, how do companies assess the risks ahead and what risks that may not be obvious are there out there for the new entrants? Most of the risks are understandable. They can be evaluated, uh, monitored carefully. The only important aspect that remains to, to be seen is the cultural shock, the business practices, the bureaucratic roles, and uh, the problem is when economic interest and political uh, control is in the hands of the people who run the economy and the politics of it, it can destroy or build groups overnight. If you look at the great uh, potential that is there for Malaysia. It's a great country. They have done wonderful progress during the last 40 years, both in terms of education, in terms of business development, in terms of uh, managing their markets. I mean, they came absolutely on top of the Asian crisis, if you remember that in, the, in, in 1997 and 98. Uh, what is driving Malaysia down in terms of economic deterioration? is uh, uncompetitive pricing structures that is reducing their production, that is affecting their economy. So I think this is the only wild card which is there, that the nations must be respectful of the, writ of the, of, of the rights and the writ of the state should be there in terms of uh, laws. And I think that's the most important part which transcends across uh, emerging markets across the globe. And I think it is the uncertainty of uh, the actions of the, of the, at the sovereign level, I think, that somehow impacts emerging markets. But I think they have learned their lessons. They all know wealth creation is good for everyone, it must increase the size of the cake for all people who live in that country. So the challenge is that we work for the welfare of the people who live there, because that is the surest guarantee for economic growth Customers in emerging nations are gaining greater access to technology and the internet, but there are still institutional voids out there. How do companies grow and prosper or even operate where there's very few intermediaries like market research companies or, or credit card systems? Management research firms have a role to play uh, in terms of uh, commenting on the economic uh, 
structures, the microeconomic levels of progress, the vision of the state for the next 20, 30 years, and I think the level of education which is there in the country. That is something that you can find it on the internet, but then you cannot have a comprehensive view of that. And at the end of the day, it's an appreciation of the niche market that you wish to be in. It is a great appreciation of uh, the buying part of the people, their habits, their preferences, their cultural ethos. If you are in the consumer market, I think that's very important. We have a theory that if we wish to enter into a new business, our shareholders, which includes our chairman, would travel to that particular country, see that business inside out. So we have to have the interconnectivity. We need to understand that business and we need to see how we need to run it. And I think that is great personal interaction and hands-on management. Zayed Iftika Ali, thank you for being with us at INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you indeed.